So again, this is now I'm, I will be talking about uh, the Gospel of John. This is now part 18. Uh, I have been um, preaching on the Gospel of John since three, almost three years now. I'm about to end this year. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah, nakalahutay <laughs> ko. And I hope many of you got so many things. The Gospel of John is so rich. No, daghang gyud kayo siya, daghang kayo kag makuha uh, when you study the Gospel of John. And again, we are now uh, in the period of conference. This is series 4. Now, I have preached on this particular period. Uh, this is my fourth preaching on this particular topic and this morning we will be covering John chapter 15 verse 18 because so man ako nahuman last time ang ch uh, chapter 15 up to uh, the end of chapter 16 so medyo taas taas ang atong i-cover this morning no? so I will not be hoping I will uh, make it in time no? So anyway, just a review and introduction in the last installment in our study of the Gospel of John. We covered John 15, as I've said, 1 to 17, where Jesus talked about the vine and the vineyard. Okay? Now this part of his farewell discourse, it's the period, it's called the period of conference for those who have not been with us, because this is now just Jesus and his disciples, because we're now counting the days now towards his crucifixion. In fact, pila na lang ka days. No, it's not even a week, and then Jesus will be crucified. So, this part of the gospel actually took place as they were making their way to the Garden of Gethsemane uh, from the upper room, no, where they had the Last Supper. Now, to the disciples, past, present, and future, Jesus stressed the importance of remaining in the vine and bearing fruits as his disciples. Now, this particular topic in the last two Sundays, the message of becoming a disciple and bearing not just fruit but much fruit has been repeated and amplified by the messages of both Mom Jenny and Pastor Edgar. Now, we all know and we've experienced it as we encounter the Lord that whenever God repeats something, repetition in most cases is a device used by the Holy Spirit to get our attention or to urge us to obey. Amen? So let's take heed. Let's take heed no? that this uh, particular topic, bearing fruit, being a disciple is very, very important at this stage of our church's journey. And I hope each one of us has taken to heart what has been preached. Amen? So, in na ko na yung kaugalingon this morning. I am a disciple of Jesus. And I will bear much fruit. Okay, once again, with conviction. Okay? I am a disciple of Jesus. And I will bear much fruit. Amen. So this morning we will be continuing from where we left off last time. And I have divided this message into three sections. One, the world hates the disciples. Two, the work of the Holy Spirit. And three, promises moving Forward. Amen. Are you excited? So let's dive and let's go to the first section. The world hates the disciples. Okay, kuya wantani. No, kaya pil rabatani, past, present, and future. Ragod ni siyang mga disipolo. No. So we'll read from John 15 18 to 16 4. I have missed uh, some of the verses. I've only written uh, those that I will be taking up this morning. Okay, it starts with, If the world hates you, keep in mind that it hated me first. They will treat you this way because of my name, for they do not know the one who sent me. 
If I had not come and spoken to them, they would not be guilty of sin. He who hates me hates my father as well. If I had not done among them what no one else did, they would not be guilty of sin. But this is to fulfill what is written in their law. They hated me without reason. And you also must testify, for you have been with me from the beginning. John 16 verse 1, all this I have told you so that you will not go astray. They will put you out of the synagogue. In fact, a time is coming when anyone who kills you will think he is offering a service to God. They will do such things because they have not known the Father or me. And verse 4, I have told you this so that when the time comes, you will remember that I warned you. I did not tell you this at first because I was with you. Amen? So starting with verse 18, if the world hates you, keep in mind that it hated me first. Jesus was warning his disciples that they will be working amidst extremely difficult situations if they were to bear fruit. Amen? No, um, when Jesus told them to go and preach the gospel, the reception, <laughs> the reception that they will be given is not really the best of circumstances. In fact, it's going to be very, very harsh. The world was going to hate them. The world was going to ostracize them. And the world was, the world was going to kill them. Now, ikaw daw kung iingnon, ana mo pa dayon ka, ka? No, I doubt. No? I doubt inong ka nga. If you do this, you will be killed. I doubt, no, kung di ka magduha-duha. Musunod pa ba ka ni Jesus? Now, the term world, cosmos, no, ang Greek word, ana has several uses in the Johannine writings. One, it refers to the universe as an object of creation. Important thing, nato, what is the use of the term world here? Because last week, nag-preach ba si Edgar? And uh, the other week, nag-preach si Edgar that we are to have a relationship with the world. No? So, klaro na to. Unsa man siya, kay kinig karoningon man the world hates the disciples, makagrelasyon ka og mga tawo nga diganahan nimo. No, so let's be clear about this, okay? So una nga use of the term cosmos or world, the universe as an object, it means the universe as an object of creation and that's found in John 1:10. Now he was in the world, but and though the world was made through him, they he the world did not recognize him. So, manang gamit, Anna, it's an object of creation. And then, gigamit mo na ni John ng world to refer to mankind in general as an object of God's love. And we know the famous verse, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. And then next is that, is this the third one? That's not... Okay? The materialistic system that tempts the world away from God. Now, kining a meaning sa world, nani sa first John 2.15 to 16. Dia agisulti, do not love the world or anything in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in them. No, so klaro na to. On sa context, pagamit ani. Now, here, in the verse that we just read, in verse 18, the world, the term world refers to the mass of people who are hostile or indifferent to God and his people. Okay? So when Jesus was saying, if the world hates you, meaning if those people who are hostile and indifferent to the gospel, to God or his people, uh, remember, no? And it will, and they will experience that. Remember, that it hated me first. Okay? So, muna ang context. Ana. Now, between Jesus and his disciples, and Jesus and his disciples, and the world in rebellion against God, is a hostility which is deep and hateful. Okay? Nana siya ngagap. 
No? So when we actually come into uh, God, no? as we accepted the Lord as our personal God and Savior, no, we actually entered a war. <laughs> war zone. No, dilini basta basta mahimong Kristiyano. No, because there is this conflict that has been going on for ages between what is good and what is evil. Okay? Jesus actually had a first-hand experience of the ostracism and contempt that was heaped on him, but he accepted the world's hatred as a matter of course. No, wala na siya na surprise. He knew. He knew that this was going to be the reception uh, that he will be having. But he tried. No, in the past when we talked about, when we were covering uh, this uh, chapter, that uh, this book of John, makita na to how Jesus tried. The many miracles that he made, even if he knew that at the end, no, on, of all the crowds that gathered around him, 500 na lang ang nabilin at the end, no? Because there is this hostility that uh, is um, between uh, God and evil, okay? So, he instructed actually in these verses the disciples to do likewise. Ay na mo katingala, tingnan siya. I know katingala because this is the logical consequence of following Jesus Christ. No, we all experience it. No, it may not be hate, but we all experience the prejudice of being a Christian once in a while. Or osay daghan, no? Daghan kayo mo ingon bo daghan na siya, okay? Bo daghan na siya. Basin po di ay dili ka bo daghan. <laughs> Tanaon or experience, no? Klaro ha pod, kung insakto ba na ilang ipanulti. But, you know, when we receive this treatment, we should not be surprised. Jesus said in verse 16, 1, All this I have told you so that you will not fall away. Meaning, when you encounter such things, hate, prejudice, ostracism, no difficult people, difficult situations. When you experience these things because of your faith, no, not because of anything else. Because na mo, of course, no consequence na sa imong gipanghimo ng mayo. But if it is because of your faith, ayaw nagka offend, no. Mo nagingon dere. Jesus already told his disciples, ayaw na mo ka offend, ayaw na mo ka backslide, okay? Ayaw na mo, ayaw na mo pahawa sa faith just because you encounter such oppositions, okay? In fact, John reiterates this in his book, First John 3.13, Don't be surprised, my brothers and sisters, that the world hates you. Ay na mo katingala, amen? Because, mo lagi na. Now, Jesus says in these verses, in verse 25, He says that the world's hatred is irrational. No, dili siya masabtan. It is without cause, in fact. It is without reason. Ang giingon diha sa uban nga rendition. It happens by and because of association. You know, in verse 18, he says, Keep in mind that they hated me first. Muna nga, di sa sila ganahan ninyo. Okay. Just because you are born again, or just because you are um, uh, you are in the side of truth. You preach Jesus. Just because of that, now people will hate you. People will not like you. Na nasa na siya dario, magwali na sa na siya. No, sige na lang siya gwali. Okay. The second reason is because of ignorance. In verse twenty-one, Jesus says, "For they do not know." Ang no dere is experiential. No, it's not head knowledge. For they do not know the one who sent me. Well, that's why people hate you. Wala sila, it's not because wala sila kaila sa gino, but because they have not experienced the Lord just as you have experienced the Lord. Amen? And then the third is because of unbelief. No, hindi sila mo to'o. In Jesus claims works and standards. And that's in verse 22. If I had not come and spoken to them, 
they would not be guilty of sin. Amen? But there are, of course, bigger issues. And one is that the world in general is in enmity against God. No? In Romans 8, 7, the mind governed by the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. Amen? From the very beginning, dito pa nagikan kang Adam. Okay? Dito pa nagikan nga away. Wa pala na solbad ang todron. No? But Jesus already came and provided the solutions. And in the end, He will be victorious. We know that. It's already written. Amen? So from the very, very beginning, wa pala na tao, ikaw ga ko, nana ni. No? So nana ni siya nga divide. Amen? And then, the second reason is that the world loves darkness rather than light. Nagyayoban. No? There will be people that you will encounter that will not, bisan mong saon pa ni mo, bisan grabe na ni mong ampo-ampo, lohod-lohod, di ha? Di gyud. No? Di li gyud sila. In fact, you know, I just received the State of the Great Commission report from Lausanne Committee And then the biggest jump in terms of religions or no religion is the uh, sector of agnosticism. No, uh, it's not even the Muslims. No, but it's more and more people nowadays do not believe that there is a Creator God. Do not put their faith in any kind of God. Whatsoever, no modernism has really, really invaded the world. No, it has been such a rampant. Dako gid kayo, because before, sa among mga statistics before, no, way back in 1994 when we started the Kairos course, the may rakay na siya in the pie, the may ragid na siya kayo. But now it's almost as large as the Muslim population. So we should be careful, no? We will encounter so many people more and more that do not have any kind of faith whatsoever. They only believe in themselves. Amen? What ang giingon dito, in the last days, more and more people will be lovers of themselves. And that's happening right now. But despite these harsh conditions, the disciples were still to testify about him together with the Holy Spirit. No, Jesus, despite all that, you still have to bear fruit. It's fruit or nothing. No, fruit, more fruit, much fruit. No, more than context, any discourse. Amen. In John 15, 27, it says, And you also must testify, for you have been with me from the beginning. King Samandiai. Kinsa man na yung testify bahin sa gino, kita raman. Okay? Because we have experienced Him. And in John 15, 26, He said, But when the Helper comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father, He will bear witness about me. So, doha di ay, in this world today, there are two that are testifying about Jesus, the Holy Spirit, And us, if you do not do your part, no one will. Amen. So, okay, let's testify now. What I like about Jesus is he's very honest. No, he does not hide the consequences of following him. Usahin no na tay mga kontrata ng pirmahan. Kinalan na kinalan tao magnifier para makita na to ang fine print. Kaya usahin na pirma lang tao at kabalong na tigip pirmahan mo at kasabot. But Jesus doesn't hide those things. It's in plain writing, okay, in his gospel. John 16, 2, they will put you out of the synagogues. In fact, a time is coming when anyone who kills you will think he's offering a service to God. Now, the disciples, the disciples, especially the 12, will be executed all in the name of God. Doing God a service. John 16 verse 4. Giyingna na sila daan. 
I have told you this. Okay? So that when the time comes, you will remember that I warned you. Koyawa mga disciples, especially the twelve, they have earned their right at the kingdom of God. And I will show you how they all died. No? Matthias was crucified. Peter and Philip were crucified upside down. Andrew was crucified in an X-shaped cross. Thomas was killed with a spear. spear. Bartholomew, my, Bartholomew's manner of death is not certain. Tradition said he may have been tortured and drowned or crucified upside down or he was skinned alive and beheaded. Okay? Matthew and James the Greater, James the Greater is Jesus' brother, no? were killed by the sword, executed, executed by the sword. James the Lesser or James Alphaeus was stoned to death. Simon the Zealot, katong nag-replace kang uh, who, Judas, no? was sawn into half. Paul was beheaded. beheaded. Now, Paul was not part of the twelve, but he's one of the greatest apostles that ever there ever was. Only John died from the natural causes due to old age. And Jesus said to him, he will not die like all the others. Imagine that. This is your heritage. Okay? The gospel that came to us is very, very costly. I don't know if you realize no, nagdagay lang pakamatayan ang gospel ngayon mo atong nadawat. Amen? Daghay ng pakamatay, not just Jesus. Jesus died on the cross for all of us, but so did scores of his disciples. Una na nakabot sa ato, daghay ng pakamatay, Ana. Amen? So let's reflect. How grateful are we for the gift of salvation that we have received? Grateful ba ta? Amen? Do you treasure it every day? Now that Jesus saved you? How committed are you to sharing the gospel? So an important reminder in this part of the section that we are covering is be sober. No? Be sober. Count the cost of following Jesus Christ. No, dili pwede. Ngayano rata nga pagka No, no maulaw ta. No, because we have a cloud of witnesses. No, surrounding us is a cloud of witnesses, it says in Hebrews, that are cheering us on. No, padayon, usahay kita, mahagpara ta, gamay lang, na offend lang ta, gilibak lang ta ni, ni koana ta. No, ni hunong na ta, di na ko anang born again, di na ko mahimu, di na ko anang Christian. Kay, di ko ganahan na niya. Ang uban sa ato magambak-ambak og simbahan kay natay kontra no pato to isang bala naman naman day si sister dere balin kog laing simbahan don't be like that no ang atong kristiyano ang atong christian life is not made up of those silly things amen no so be sober count the cost of following jesus christ if you don't these things will overtake you and you will not be prepared. Amen? And many difficult times are in, are coming. No, it has been recorded. Now, kung nahitabo, tanan ng mga prophecies before, no, how much more? When Jesus said that in the end times, all these things will be happening, be prepared. Amen? Now, the second section talks about the work of the Holy Spirit, and this is where I would like to focus on. And this is from John 16, 5 to 15. Because I have said these things, you are filled with grief. But I tell you the truth, it is for your good that I am going away. Unless I go away, the counselor will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. When he comes, he will convict the world of guilt in regard to sin and righteousness and judgment. In regard to sin, because men do not believe me. 
in regard to righteousness because I'm going to the Father where you can see me no longer and in regard to judgment because the prince of this world now stands condemned. But when he, the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. And that's what Kira was actually saying, praying this morning, Lord, guide us. No, <laughs> guide us, lead us. No, uh, he will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears and he will tell you what is yet to come. He will bring glory to me by taking from what is mine and making it known to you. All that belongs to the Father is mine. That is why I said, the Spirit will take from what is mine and make it known to you. So that's the second section. Now with the background of Jesus' imminent departure and the world's hatred that awaits the disciples, verse 16 tells us, no, katong atong gibasa, the disciples were filled with grief. Now, the fact that we even have a portion of this gospel written is truly miraculous, no? Because how is it that disciples would still remember all that Jesus said during this time? No? In fact, katong namatay akong papadagan, kayo nag-istorya sa ako, huwag ko'y madumduman mo sa isa because you are, you are in a haze. No, walang kakabalon say what's happening around you. The pain is just too much. And I'm sure at this particular time, yung unani po ng mga ipang bati sa disciples, they were disoriented, they were filled, their hearts were filled with grief. No, pagani naman tayo si Jesus, rabi na nilang agwanta. So, but John himself gave us the answer in chapter 14, verse 26, but the Counselor, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said. Amen. So decades later, when John wrote his gospel, it was the work of the Holy Spirit. Now that's why we can read about it now. No, kung say nahitabo sa ilaha. Now Jesus in previous chapters hinted about the coming of another counselor, but this time he actually made this very, very clear, abundantly clear. But I tell you the truth, it is for your good. Ningon siya. It is for your good that I am going away. Ang sagod na. No? Kano bang moingon kita ba yung atong mga kaning loved ones sa atong? Mas maayo, mas siguro nga mamatay na ko. No more na moingon, manay ta, in Jesus' name, ay pag sulti-sulti yung mula na eh. Oh, but Jesus said this, it's better for you that I go away. Because unless I go away, the counselor will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. So other renditions actually say, it is to your advantage that I go, or it is expedient for you that I go, or it is profitable for you that I go. In all counts, Jesus was saying, it is better for the disciples of Jesus, uh, for Jesus to live so that the Holy Spirit can come. No? Why? Why? Because Jesus in his humanity is localized. No? Shera. He can only be in one place at one time. But the Holy Spirit can be present and can communicate with all of them everywhere at the same time. Okay? So the coming of the Counselor, therefore, would equip the disciples for a wider and more potent ministry. That's why grabbing explode, actually, not because of the work of the Holy Spirit and the disciples together. No, it was a more potent ministry rather than if Jesus was there. Now, twice in verses 14 and 15, Jesus says, The Spirit will take from what is mine and will make it known to you. Okay, what are these? What is mine? No? What is mine? the Holy Spirit from Jesus and will share it with you, will make it known to you. And that is... He will share and administer Jesus' power, character, and authority. Okay? Now, Jesus' power is administered through the gifts of the Spirit. Jesus' character is administered through, administered through the fruits of the Spirit. Jesus' authority is administered by the Spirit through the ministry offices in Ephesians 4. So let's take 
I look at that closely. Ako ang gilis na diha. No? <clears throat> Next slide, please. The fruits of the Spirit. No? In Galatians 5.22. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. We can easily say that is Jesus' character. No? So the Holy Spirit will take from what is from Jesus and then will distribute it to all of us. Each one of us will be exercising any one of those fruits of the Spirit. And then, the gifts of the Holy Spirit, which is in 1 Corinthians 12, 1-7. Vocal gifts, tongues, interpretation of tongues, prophecy. The revelation gifts, word of wisdom, word of knowledge, discerning of spirits. Power gifts, faith, healing, working of miracles, and then the ministry offices in Ephesians 4, 11, 12, apostle, prophet, teacher, pastor, evangelist. Jesus is all of that. No? Jesus, is, Jesus is all of that. So, there is a variety of gifts that is available. As a result of Jesus' death, resurrection, and ascension, the Holy Spirit would take all of this, Jesus' character, Jesus' gifts, and Jesus' authority and minister it, share it with the disciples. And because of his ministry, every local church and every gathering of believers could truly say, Jesus is among us. And in terms of character, power, of, and authority. Amen. Amen. So, reflection, cultivate and develop the fruit of the Spirit in your life. Seek spiritual gifts. Ask the Spirit to impart them to you. Amen? Pangayo mo sa ginoo. No, when I was a young Christian, I said, no, when I knew that there was going to be a three-day fasting and they, that the elders will be laying hands on us and praying for the gifts of the Holy Spirit to come, I said, Lord, Katog yung discernment of wisdom ang ako. Nangayog yung ko. <laughs> no? Lord, discernment of wisdom. Although, no, we never know what we will get. But each one will have a gift. Minimum one. Pero sa high multiple ang yatap sa mo sa gino. Now, be open. Once you receive the gift, operate them. As you receive them. Okay? Kay accountability na nani mo sa gino. Amen? Now, each one of us are already aware what our giftings are. Be open also to the call of God into one of the ministry offices. Now this year, no, Pastor Edgar is announcing we will schedule a series on the spiritual gifts and the ministry offices and it will be followed by prayers for impartation. We'll be calling for a prayer and fasting uh, as we do this. So start praying about this. Amen? Start praying now. Wala pa kakabalo kung sa imong gift, start praying. Amen? Because God is a very generous God. He distributes gifts lavishly. Amen? So from verse 18 to 14, Jesus again elaborates on the three aspects of the ministry of the Holy Spirit. He says, to the world, and he uses verbs in each of these relationships. To the world, he convicts. To the disciples, he guides. And to Jesus, he glorifies. Amen? So John 16, verse 8, when we say to the world, he convicts. In John 16, 8, he says, when he comes, he will convict the world of guilt in regard to sin, righteousness, and judgment. Now, take note. This is the only time that the Holy Spirit is spoken of as performing a work to the world. Moraning a time. No, and the work that he does is to convict. Now, the key to this aspect of his ministry is the word convict. Convict is a legal term. Okay? That means to prove that someone is guilty of a crime in a court of law. Sakto ba ko, mga abogado? Okay? Dagang kay ng abogado na rin. Kasi yun yung nasayop ko. Okay? Now, this Conviction applies to three particular areas. Monegingunya, sin, righteousness, and judgment. Now, the background of Jesus' statements here are actually forensic. Okay? They are the background of a courtroom. Now that the Holy Spirit is actually in a courtroom. Okay? 
With regards to sin, the spirit is the world's prosecutor or plaintiff now who presents God's case against humanity. Now when, she, uh, when the Holy Spirit comes, he will convict the world of sin. Now he creates it so that it is inescapable. He brings an awareness of sin to that, so that it cannot be dismissed, it cannot be excused, or it cannot be escaped. Now the essence of sin is unbelief. Okay? It is the total rejection of God's message or messenger. A human court can convict a man of murder, but only the Holy Spirit can convict a man of unbelief. Okay? Now, in the light of eternity, okay, unbelief is the greatest, most heinous, and most fatal of sins. Amen? Because it is not a sin committed out of ignorance. It is a sin that you choose. Amen? You either believe God or you do not believe. You either accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior or you do not. Amen? There is no middle ground. Wala good. Anyone who chooses the path of unbelief will be rightfully condemned. Amen? So that's what he does. With regards to righteousness, the Spirit enforces the absolute standard of God's character, no? to which all thoughts and actions must be compared. The standard of righteousness is the Lord. Jesus Christ because he now returns to the Father. His return to the right hand of the Father was a complete vindication of all that he did and all that he is. You know, you know there is an infinite gap between the righteousness of God and the sinful state of man. Now that we cannot bridge. No, you cannot bridge that gap because the Bible said without Christ, no, all our righteousness are like filthy rags. Murara nagtrapo. Bisan pag 1 million, 2 million, 3 million, 1 billion ay mong gihatag para sa ginoo. No, if you do not have Christ, it's nothing. No, it's like a filthy rag. Trapo. No, bisan giunsa pa nimo nagluhod ka gikan sa ato dikan dito sa uh, entrance padong sa altar no taas kayo giunsa pa nimo kada Bernie Santo no nagpabunal ka nothing without Christ Okay I'll tell you it's nothing The first step of salvation is always to have an awareness that we need a mediator because Right. Righteousness ni Christ. Ogi mong righteousness. No? If you rely on your own righteousness, sorry na lang ka. No? That's not what will get you into heaven. Why timbang timbang? Pagabot dito. No? Wala. Di mo ta, di. Okay, let me be me blunt. No? Pagabot ninyo dito, di mo sugato ni San Pedro. Okay? Hindi mo sugato, hindi siya magdagtimbangan. Hindi ito. O, oh, dire, mo mayong binuhatan. O, oh, dire, ang dauta ni mong binuhatan. Kung sundagan itong mayo, aksun, kaglangit. It's not the way that works. Salvation is free. Salvation is free. No, you get it because of what Jesus has done on the cross of Calvary. You only need to accept it. You only need to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Now, with regards, pakpakan daw ko na natong gino. Hapit ako mahuman, 11.40 na. Hingo na ba akong banang? You make your preaching simple para di na mataas kay napatay community service. I hope I'll finish. Now, with regards to judgment, the Spirit convicts because the Prince of this world now stands condemned. The cross was the utter condemnation and defeat of the prince of this world. Condemned is the perfect tense. 
kick retai, which expresses a settled state. Satan is already under judgment, and the sentence is fixed and permanent. No, he will be thrown into the lake of fire. Unfortunately, wide is the road to destruction. Daghay mo ban. Daghay mo ban ni Satan. I hope ani nga room walay bisag isa. Okay? Ayaw gyud mo gato dito. Inita na man gani mo diri karon sa pakato. Right? No? All those who are aligned with Satan will also be condemned together with him in eternity. Okay, so in this life, you only get one chance. Do not be foolish. Amen. Do not be foolish. Choose wisely. Choose Christ. If you do not choose Christ, if you come on, kang ha, adi na lang ko mabuto. Wala may kung kung ganahan na nilang doha. Dire na ko sa tunga. Sorry. If you do not choose Christ, you automatically get aligned with Satan. Di na kaki nang lang mo pili, no? It's either Christ or Christ. Mo na yung choice. No, if you want life in eternity, no? Amen. Claro? Now, with regards to the believers, he will guide. No? The Greek word for this is used colloquially to describe someone taking the hand of a blind man in order to lead them. Well, and that's very, very appropriate because we're blinded to many opportunities, to possibilities, to the truth, to the things that are happening around us. So the Holy Spirit graciously and kindly takes our hand and leads us, okay? He guides us to a full revelation of Christ's character because Jesus is the truth, amen? He also leads us in our daily lives. It says in Romans 8, 14, as many as are as led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. Kung ikaw, no, you are led by the Holy Spirit of God, you are a son of God, okay? Now I think the Holy Spirit is actually incredibly wise in terms of his leading uh, the believers. Not just in terms of the manner by which he leads us, but how often he leads us, okay? Because sometimes, you know, some people talk to me and sometimes they give the impression <coughs> that almost every second of the day, no, the Holy Spirit leads them, telling them what to eat, what to wear, where to go. Okay, na nang where to go, pero what to eat, what to wear, no? whether you put on makeup or not. No? Sometimes, sing unana ba? Now, I would like to suggest to you that the Holy Spirit is not a helicopter parent, okay? Who hovers around us, directing every move that we make. In His divine wisdom, He does lead us. But yet, at the same time, He develops us as mature, free, self-choosing, creative personalities. Amen. In my experience, He's been there in the crucial moments when I really needed his leading. No, and yet most of the times, or most of the time, or much of the time, he leaves me with a considerable degree of freedom. No, even much more than I would like. And that's he is. He also, it also says that the Holy Spirit will tell you what is yet to come. No, Jesus in this discourse actually prepares the disciples for what is coming. Inunana po ng Holy Spirit. Now, he will warn us of significant seasons that we are about to enter into. In fact, uh, bago lang na ito, sa, hitabo sa ako in 2023. 2020 pa, nagsultin ako sa akong mga boss sa SMI. Mamuritar ko by 2024. Now, atong 2023, nag-leaders meeting mi dere. No? So, uh, during that leaders meeting, they pair up me with some people, uh, with katong mga core group sa lain-lain ng mga congregations, nagbunot-bunot me, pair up kung kinsay mag-prophesy -prophe to one another. Now, nakakuha sa akong pangalan, <laughs> ang akong nakapartner is someone from Bugsukan. 
No, I didn't know her. She doesn't know me. I've only met her once or twice. No, so katong nagpray na me. In fact, pagka pagkabalo niya nga ako yung partner, grabe niya ang sagit. Ah, niya naging siya. Di ko, di ko kakampastora niya. Ano. But katong nagpray na me, tingon siya nga, <coughs> ako yung niunang pray. No, kaya para to give her time. Dugay, kaya siya nakagawan sa ako, naguwat ko. Hapit naging kumuingon nga, okay raw, huwa kay word of prophecy para sa ako. And then, just as I, wa- as I was about to say that, ningon siya, ningon si Lord nga, ayaw sa daw retire. <laughs> And I said, oh my goodness, no, nobody knows about that. Only the very few people in my ministry. No, wala yung nakabalo. No, and this was already 2020 2024. I said, okay, hindi ko ma-resign. And I tell you, no, muragwa lang to at that time. But when end of 2023 came, something happened. And I really, really wanted to retire. Kung pwede palang ora mismo, mo-retire ko. No, something bad happened in our team. And then, kung wala to siyang a prophecy, I would have retired. No, so I said, para biyon lang nina ako ng 2024. Magampo na po ko sa Ginoo sa 2025. <laughs> no? It's very important when you receive a promise or a word that you know the correct timing of when that will happen. And that is the thing that sometimes God doesn't tell you in terms of guidance. Okay? So, verse 13 also says, He will not speak of His own. He says the things that Jesus is saying and he does the things that Jesus is doing. The Holy Spirit is the agent of Jesus active in and through the believing community. He's here. Okay? The, uh, the Bible says where two or three are gathered in his name, there is God in the midst of them. Amen? Now, to Jesus, his ministry to Jesus is to glorify. Amen. The Spirit's great passion is to magnify, is to mediate, and is to minister Jesus Christ to the believers, to us and to the world. Amen. His chief purpose is not to make himself prominent. In fact, when you are having an encounter no, with God, you actually forget it's the Holy Spirit who's doing it. No, you always Say, Lord Jesus, thank you so much. Amen? Because that's what he does. Now he magnifies the Lord Jesus Christ. And John the Baptist was of this same spirit. He said in John 3.30, he must become greater. I must become less. Amen? Now, yung nana ba ta? O sa ira ba ka ng gamito na ta sa ginobitaw? Ang auna mula pa lang atong mga atay. No, atong mga kalag. Or ato mga garbo. No? Balira ba ang mahitabo? I will become greater, he will become less. No? Kada na yung mahitabo, ang ginoo, sa'yo na kayo. Ako man to. Ako to. No? We, na yung tao. We claim the credit. Okay? Let's not do that. Okay? Verse 14, as I've said, he will take what is of Jesus, and I've already expounded on that, and will declare it to you. All that Jesus has from the Father, He shares with the Holy Spirit. And in turn, the Holy Spirit will share it with us. Amen? The Godhead is extremely generous. Pakpakanda ko na to sila. Amen. So, reflection. Pray for your unsaved loved ones to be convicted and to give their lives to Christ. Amen. Journey deeper in God's guidance and promises for your life. Remember the verses God gave you at the beginning of this year. Okay? Pray that you will glorify God in the sphere of your influence. And last, kamay na lang, just give me a little time. Di lang ako basahon ang verses. Kay taas na siya kayo, okay? Now, at the beginning of this section, the disciples were actually confused. By what Jesus was saying, no? In a little while, I'll be with you. But then, in a little while, you will see me again. Nalibog sila na. No? They were confused, but mahadlok sila mo, mangutana. Kaya in previous times, nangutana, mangutana, sila. Ngilang questions were very foolish. 
niya gibara sila ni Jesus, okay? So karon, manlok na sila mangutana, di sila gusto mangutana. Okay, they use them perfect tense here. Keep asking. Sige sila pangutana, pero rin nila paibawon si Jesus. No, nag sila sila ra. Unsay ang bot pasabot adto? No, what is a little while? What does it mean? Okay? But Jesus knows. No, and he was aware. So he tries to explain this again about the next season that they are about to face. And this was Jesus' death, crucifixion, and resurrection. Now, Jesus actually compared their parting to the painful birth of a child, which, when fully accomplished, ultimately brings joy. No? Karabi ito ang mga anak, tasakit rin na. Pero nga naman, kaduha, katulog, kaupat ng itong mga anak. No? Wala. Bisan kinsa nga mama ay mong pangutan, o mingon ganyan, wag yun ay lain, pinakasakit, kanag yung panganak. No, pero dagan kay ganak, no? Malimtan man. No, ultimately it brings joy kung nalabi na nan ang bata. This was the same for the disciples. Jesus was saying to them, post resurrection for the disciples will hold a lot of promise. Okay? Una, no one will ever be able to take away their joys. Their joy in verse 22. Not persecution, not fear, not doubts. Not difficult people or circumstances, nor death. Okay, everlasting joy is one of the hallmarks, remarkable hallmark of God's kingdom. Amen. No, wala na tears. Can you imagine that kind of kingdom, that kind of life? Di na kuno kamo hilak. No, when you get to heaven, Isaiah 51 verse 11 says, "And the ransom of the Lord shall return." And come to Zion with singing. Everlasting joy shall be upon their heads. They shall obtain gladness and joy. And sorrow and sighing shall flee away. I tell you, karon ng mga panahon din na madumduman sa mga disciples nga gikat dahil sila into half. No? Or gikrucify dahil sila. They will not remember it anymore. The pain will not be there. Amen? Because everlasting joy has replaced the pain That has happened. Don't you want that? Amen. So daghan na to kasakit ani nga kinabuhi. No, I would love that. Amen. Secondly, what will happen? A new and deeper fellowship with the Father will come to them, and this new relationship will actually primarily impact their prayer life. Boldness and confidence can now characterize their approach because of what Jesus has done. In fact, the word that is used there for ask, you will ask whatever it is in my name and it will be given to you so that your joy may be complete. Okay, ang word nga ask diha is erotao, which means to request of an equal. No? Like na, ang ilang relationship after Jesus uh, resurrects, no? Because they had committed themselves to Jesus and had believed the ground for this relationship was now immovable. That's why with confidence, makaingon yun si Jesus, ask whatever, ask whatever, ask whatever. Sa disciples na ha, sa 12 disciples, na di na nato pwede contextualize sa atong mga kaugalingon, pwede, pero... Agi sa mo sa ilang gyagian. Okay? Ask whatever. Now, the third thing, and which I really, really love, is that the assurance of acceptance and victory despite their failures. Because, you know, after all this discourse, the disciples on one, after Jesus explained, no, kung sa'y mahitabo, the disciples said, wow, wow, kini na giyod, kini na giyod, no? We now believe you. Ano yung mga disciples, no? That's what they said to Jesus. Now you are speaking to us in plain language. We believe you come from God. Nabi ni mo, si Jesus said, wow, now you believe, no? Do you now believe? And then Jesus actually says, a time is coming, and in fact, it will come, When you will be scattered, all of you, no, each to your own home. Nanguli di to silang tanan, no, sila mga balay. Gibiyan kada nila si Jesus, no. You will leave me all alone, no. 
Just as Jesus knew their questions, Jesus also knew what their weaknesses were. And yet, and yet, he finishes this discourse in the same way that he started it. Remember in John 15 verse 1, the first verse says, Let not your hearts be troubled. And in the ending of chapter 16, he ends it. And I will be reading it from the Amplified Version. I have told you these things so that in me you may have perfect peace. In the world you have tribulation and distress and suffering. But be courageous, be confident, be undaunted, be filled with joy. I have overcome the world. My conquest is accomplished. My victory abiding. Amen? And that, Jesus said that to them, knowing that they will fail. Knowing that they will abandon him. And yet Jesus still took the time to encourage each one of them. Amen? So we all see, we all struggle to see God's purposes come to birth. Travail is something that all of us all know to some degree, whatever it is you are going through, right now I believe the Lord is saying to each one of us today, and this is what I would like to leave you, endure. Do not give up. Amen? You are closer to the finish line more than you know. Kung dugay na siyang struggle, endure. No? A little while, and I say that with confidence, your trials will be over. Gamay na lang. Aguantahan na lang. Amen? You will then receive joy that can never be taken away from you. Pray to the Father for help. Even if you fail, you will be accepted. Amen? And you will eventually win because Jesus has overcome. Amen. God bless.